Hi, I'm Casket Clinket Artist Dean Heron, and today we're making canoe bowls. We're going to be making our canoe bowls out of yellow cedar. That way we don't have to worry too much about the drying process, uh, although there might be a little bit of moisture in this block of wood. Um, we, I won't know what the wood's going to do until I start carving on it. Uh, but like with any project, you want to put your center line on, you want to put your center line along, along uh, the whole side of it. And that way, um, with the center line, you can match things up. So we'll put a center line on this way. We're going to measure the length and get a center line around the corner to act as the middle of our canoe bowl. And then we'll, we'll draw on uh, where that bowl might, uh, what that bowl is going to look like. And then we'll cut off the excess wood on the bandsaw and uh, we'll probably uh, cut out the planes on the outside as well. Uh, we may even do the little dip part here as well. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, cut up as much as you can if you have access to a bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, uh, you can use your ads and you can add away this, this area or you can use your chisels and, uh, and your mallet, uh, depending on what tools you have access to. I just uh, find it convenient on the bandsaw since I have one and uh, makes the job go nice and easy. So we'll draw in the profiles and then we'll uh, get going from there. Okay, so I've uh, come up with a profile that I like, uh, that I've drawn on there. This will be the side profile and then the top profile there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out on the bandsaw here. And once I've done the, these two down here, um, what I'll do is probably cut this one back out and then draw these ones back on. Alright, so this is what we'll do. So with our canoe bowls, we've cut out the shape now on the bandsaw, and it's really an exaggerated shape of the of the great Northwest Coast uh, canoes, kind of more of a northern style canoe. And it's a bowl, and it's uh, it's going to be a really nice shape to it. So what I've drawn on here are just the parts of the the canoe onto the parts of the canoe, and I'm cutting it out. I got this nice front form here. It's the bow of the boat. Over here, I've got the stern. And uh, these lines up on the top here uh, represent the, the gunnels. And it's uh, you can cut these into nice uh, shapes once you've got the form out of there. And if you flip it over, you can see that I've put the keel on there as well. And we'll be using gouges and a mallet to get all that out to kind of excavate all this extra wood out of here and uh, on the one that I've been working on previously you can see how we've done that we've uh, taken away the bits uh, where you want the keel to go the gunnels on a nice shape here we've kind of taken out this area to look more like a like a like a, almost like a spoon shape it has all these nice uh, planes on it and you can see that it's uh, similar in shape uh, to the one that we're going to make now. Again, you have the, the bow of the boat to the stern. And it's really an exaggerated shape just to make a really nice looking bowl. So we'll use the gouges and uh, we'll take off the keel first and get the bottom shape on there first uh, before I start touching anything in the actual bowl itself. And that way I'll have a a place to to work to and uh, make sure that your center lines on you see I've got a center line on through the whole piece of wood and uh, just like the paddle and I've got a center line that goes around um, the center of the wood going the opposite way and that way I can keep it even um, it's really important that we don't lose those center lines when we're working it so that way we can eye it up so we've uh, secured it now to the table and I'm going to use uh, a number 11 uh, 15 so it's 15 millimeters across 
um, and it's uh, 11 bend, so it's quite deep. You can see on the end of that chisel there, and I can use my mallet, and I'll just cut along the side of this this uh, kill line here, and uh, you're just following it. So one hand's guiding, my hand that's holding the tool's guiding, and then I'm using the mallet to uh, actually move the wood. And uh, I'll start pretty shallow back here, just sort of make a line right against this keel line. And we'll start taking that wood out of there. When it comes to the end here, you don't want to go all the way to the end. You want to leave yourself a little bit of uh, extra wood just for the, the gunnel. But back here, you can take a little bit extra out just to make that kill line come out of it. So you do one side and then you can do the other. You can see I'm just taking a couple swipes down here. And uh, we're just taking the wood out for now. We're not too worried about uh, the depth of it. There's lots of wood there. And right now we're just trying to define some planes. We're just trying to define some planes. You just want to sight along, you just want to look along the, both sides here from a little bit further back just to make sure you're getting the depth on either side. Nice and even. Okay, so you can see with the bowl, I've drawn on the bottom again using my center line and some tracing paper. Got the the bottom shape that I would like to have. And again, I, what I'm going to use most likely is again the number 335 chisel. I'm just going to cut around the edge here. And uh, I'm going to go right up against the edge and it's going to go from the edge of where I've drawn on to, to the gunnel. And when I get up to the gunnel, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the uh, chisel again. I'll do the same thing that I did on the keel here. I'll just run the chisel along the line there um, so that you get that nice plane here. So we'll start rounding off a little bit or getting that shape of that part of the canoe bowl together. Just getting some of this extra wood out of here. You can see the planes come together nicely. Uh, again, we're trying to get a nice even shape on either side here. So I'll need to flip it around and work on the other side for a bit. And after we get the sides evened up as much as we can, we can start putting on this gunnel at the very top of the boat. Now the boat's flipped over, so it's kind of hard to see at that moment. But we'll flip it over and flip it around and we'll even off the sides. So what you, whatever you've done to one side, do it to the other side. And you just continue covering with it. These chisels work really nice with this yellow cedar. And uh, soon we'll have the bottom up. All right, so we're, <clears throat> we've got most of our shape out of there. 
Uh, there's a few areas that are a bit high, but we can we can do that as we as we go along here. Um, but you want to get as as close as you can. So the next part, what I'm going to do on the on the hull side of this canoe bowl is to do the upper gunnels. So the again, this is upside down. This is the base of our canoe. We're going to do this line that runs across here, and what I'm going to change to is a, a number nine. Um, number 915 so it's a uh, it's a little bit shallower gouge uh, than the 11 and you can see it has a little bit of a, a not as uh, pronounced curve on it and it's really good for uh, doing this nice area here when it comes to the gunnels here on the side um, you want to keep them high in the middle and then they'll go deeper down and towards the ends here so they don't need to be really Deep. You don't need to take off a lot of meat uh, of the wood here, uh, but you want to follow that line nonetheless. You can put this into your lap and hold it on your lap and put it sideways and hold it between your knees with uh, with your leather apron. Or you can just put it on your bench and that way you can use your two hands freely. The other way method works, um, just takes a little bit more experience if you don't have a lot of experience with carving. Uh, just so that you're you're not going to injure yourself. But I've just secured it to the bench, and I think this method works really nice. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that line all the way across. Um, so I'm going to start the cut on the opposite side of this center line, not too far back, just a little bit back on the side here. I'm going to keep it nice and shallow, and then I'm going to follow that line all the way through as close as I can on both sides. Um, Again, your, your, the, the, the hand holding the chisel will guide it. The mallet's doing the work by taking the wood out. So. It just light little taps. And then you're going to follow that line on the on the same line you're going to go all the way the other way so you're going to turn your chisel around and then you can again use your your guide as it or you can flip your your boat around depends it's up to you and uh, you'll get both sides nicely done and I'll show you it in a minute so there you have it I put on the the gunnel side here you can see uh, just a, a little bit you can see the line it's a little bit more uh, formed under that thick gunnel um, and it goes all the way around uh, this top portion here and uh, you can see where I've used the number nine there all we're trying to do is just define that line right there and then we'll bl start blending some of this uh, work in here so I've done one side now I've got to do the other you see I haven't touched this one yet again when you're starting off with this one you start on your center point here and you'll work this way working with the grain and then you'll come back this way with the grain uh, just light taps you don't want to take too much off here uh, it's just really shallow in the center there and then it starts um, blending into these nice and uh, balanced turn of this canoe bowl and then you can start blending in some of this wood here and uh, that's the work we'll do right now on the other side and uh, we'll do a little bit more blending and then from there what we'll do we'll start taking out of the middle um, once you've set up your process or set up the uh, canoe uh, with all your planes and your gunnels and your center lines and all that kind of stuff the actual work of taking it out goes pretty quick especially if you're working with uh, some good chisels hand tools it comes out quite nicely and then uh, when it comes to the finishing portion of the of the bowls You'll move to traditional tools, so your bent knives that we made earlier in another workshop, you can use them. And uh, right now, we'll just do this other side, clean up a little bit more, and then we'll start hollowing it out. So, you can see here, um, we've uh, started evening out the hall. Uh, there's still quite a lot of work to do on it. Uh, but we got the, the main shape out. You can see the keel line there uh, for the bow. And then you can see the keel line in the back for the, 
we're just stirring and we'll smooth that out a little bit uh, more obviously get that down to a little bit more refined shape and then uh, we'll start working on the inside and we'll take that out um, again using chisels and uh, we'll do that process next once we've just finished off this outer part it's getting pretty close uh, for hollowing out and then you can start finishing it after I've uh, started cleaning up some of the uh, outside here um, just getting some of the high spots down and uh, getting it to a shape where I uh, can move on to working on the inside and you'll find with working on this particular shape um, the bent knives that we we made earlier on are the only sharp knife or the, the only shape that will get into those spots um, you can try other different knives maybe skews or straight knives uh, but these ones here up against, especially up against the keel are the only type of knife will, that will actually get in there and you can uh, try some different ones experiment if you want uh, but these these knives are the ones that work for me so we've got it down pretty much to a part where we can actually start picking out some of the center and it's good to do it uh, rel relatively quickly after you've uh, got your bowl to this kind of shape um, you'll find that the the when you're carving out these shapes and you got all this taken off and you'd be taking out the bowl and you got your keel on now uh, the wood st actually starts getting stressed because it's being moved in a, a couple different directions so what you want to do right now is um, release that stress and that's taking out the center here so for that what we're going to use are different uh, size gouges so you can see here I've got a, a nice 11.25 for some sharper areas, a 9.25 um, to remove some of the wood. And as I get towards the bottom of the, the bowl, I'll start using some different types of gouges. I have a spoon gouge and then I have a, uh, a gouge that has a bit of a bend in it. So this is an 8L30, so it's 30 millimeters across, the bend in it's 8 and the L is just for the the shape of the actual uh, gouge for itself and uh, for this one here it's nice to get on the bottom of that bowl with a gouge like that the, these ones will just go straight in and this one has a nice curve and you can actually bend the handle a bit as you as you're excavating all that out of there and the same thing with the spoon gouge spoon gouge has a really nice uh, round bottom to it so it gets it's nice to get into some of those corners and once you start using them and showing them showing them to you you'll see what i mean but those are tools that we're going to use right now that and our mallet and we'll start taking out the center here okay so you can see uh here i've just drawn on some reference lines here just uh i want to bring the the ends to a little bit of a point just to start off with <clears throat> and then i'll eventually just round them off a little bit make a little bit of a trough here but uh, just for now, that's where I want to go. And I'm going to, just like I did with the spoon, you're going to work from your, from your high point down to your low point, and from your high point to your low point. So you're working from the, the outer edge to the center of your bowl. Uh, you'll find that's the easiest way to get it out. Um, when you're using the gouges and stuff, uh, otherwise you'd be knocking up against the grain and it won't work all that great for you. So we'll just see how this goes. Um, I can just put it onto the uh, the bench here, and uh, I'll try a few different um, tools here. You might find that you need to hold down your piece of wood uh, either by your elbow or by other means, because um, it's gonna kind of rock back and forth on you. Uh, but what I usually do is just I'll have it rested up against the inside of my my arm here um, when I'm using it. And you just work down to that center um, you don't need to take a whole bunch of wood out at once you don't need to really crank on it for for uh, getting big chunks out it's not really what we do for carving here we're just trying to remove the wood it's a nice slow process 
Um, like I said, I'm holding it with the inside of my elbow on the edge of the, the boat here, just to counteract that lever. And we just go from there. When you're working with the gouges, sometimes these, if you pound it really quite hard into uh, the piece you're working on, it gets caught on these edges here. And the tendency when it gets stuck in there is to kind of like pry it loose. Um, it's a little bit easier if you just sort of wiggle it just a little bit. You don't want to break these, uh, the ends off of your, of your chisel. And you just work from the outside in. Just like we've been working all along, um, working with the grain makes this job a little easier. And as well, I'm going to try to keep inside these pencil lines. Keeping inside the pencil lines will uh, just allow you to fine tune the wood, the ends of the wood or the gunnel part of it. You don't want to lose any, uh, any of the wood on the sides. Just keep it thick for now, the gunnels. So you're just going to move it back and forth, turn it around. Use it back and forth. I'm always trying to find different ways to hold the boat. You can see it slipped there uh, when you're using your mallet. So now I'm just using the wrist here just to hold up the wood as I'm working on it. Just while I'm taking out more of this, uh, more of the center here. And so just along the edges here, I'm still using the straight mallet, but I'll move to uh, this type of mallet here, or this type of uh, chisel. It's the 8L, has a bit of a, a curve to it. And that way when I'm working on the bottom here, I can actually move the chisel uh, backwards just so that I don't go straight into the bottom here. Because you on the bottom of the canoe bowl here you want a nice a nice round bottom. So just setting up for the next part, uh, what we can do here. I've got the depth that I want in my in the, uh, the bowl of the boat here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take off this part here, uh, just where the gunnels are. Um, I'll probably keep it high just along the top portion of the, the boat here. And then I'll just I'll take it down where the lines are and where it meets where this bowl part goes in. So you can see I've drawn the inside gunnel as well. I've just used my uh, finger as a guide. Um, again, we're just doing this a little bit, uh, a little bit roughly, but I've just used my finger as a guide for depth all the way around. 
and what I'll do is I'll use a one of the chisels just to get underneath that little line there. Um, gives a little extra uh, movement inside the boat as well. And it thins off this little area here, the thickness of the, the boat just along the edge here. And we can get that out of there. You can see I've got the gun line on the back here or on the side. And got a keel on there. And I've done the same thing on this side. And uh, what I'll probably do is actually thin this area off a little bit so so that when it comes in it'll come in a little bit a little bit thinner. It just looks a little bit heavy to the side of the size of the boat. Canoe ball. So we'll do that portion right now. Um, this work was done by chisel or maybe even a, uh, a bent knife. Um, let's see how it works. So things start slowing down at this point as you're getting a little bit more of the finishing in there and just getting this front portion of the uh, the bow done and this uh, getting this a little bit more smooth I was using the bent knife uh, on the front here just to smooth out the, the gunnel line you can see there where it's uh, I've drawn back on pencil and I'm just using this curve here I don't I don't really want to have like a really sharp edge uh, or corner to that gunnel right on the inside of this cut here. Um, I want it to be a nice round edge, nice and smooth and round. And what uh, I use for that is this uh, bent knife. And it has a really nice uh, shape to it. It gets the, the shape that I want to get in there. So at this point, it's just a, a bit of a slower process with refining all these shapes. And in doing so, uh, you just slow down and, and just start using your, your eye and taking a look at where the high points are. And then uh, using the appropriate knife. If it doesn't work with the bent knives, I'll uh, go to something different. Uh, go to skews or maybe a straight knife. Uh, but for the most part, those bent knives, uh, they have a, an, a, a portion where they're a little bit flat. You can use them as a straight knife as well. And uh, you can use that portion of the knife. Nice thing about uh, what the places I'm working on, I have uh, just tacked my canoe bolt down to the carving table by a couple clamps. Now that I've taken the inside out of it, I can just clamp it down. And here I can actually just show you what it looks like. <clears throat> just with a couple clamps. So I've got a, a, a clamp with a little bit of rubber on it just to, so it doesn't dent too much of the wood there. And then I put an F clamp over top of it. And it's really quite sturdy. It's not going to move anywhere. And that way I can use both my hands. Okay, so I'm just going to shape off the top of this little piece right here, uh, the top of the uh, the stern on this little canoe bowl. I don't want to make these lines too sharp. Uh, I want them nice and round. It goes along with most of the uh, rest of the other sort of knife parts of the boat. And to do this little piece here, I'm just going to take it down a little bit. I don't need to take off a lot of wood, but I'm going to use another gouge. It's a, a 915. So it has a, uh, a nice bend to it, like that. And because I'm working in a small area, I've chosen a gouge that can work in that area. So when I'm working on this, I'm working with the grain going this way towards the center of the boat. I've tacked it to my bench uh, with a F clamp. And on the inside here, 
I have a nice uh, um, piece of rubber that uh, so I'm not marking the, the bolt with the clamp and all I'm gonna do is line it up with the lines of the gunnel and I'm gonna follow the gunnel uh, through here and you'll see it and it might just come off in a little piece like that because I run really great and what it's doing is just giving me a little bit of a, a shape to the stern here again I don't need to take off a whole bunch of wood I, uh, I just want to make it so it stands out but doesn't stand out a lot now, there's different ways that you can handle this portion of the boat it is, or the canoe and it's up to you really if you want to just study some of the older pieces and see what they've done in here uh, there because there's all different types of ways you can do it uh, and this is the way I've chosen to do it today So after I've taken some of the material out with that, that gouge, I've moved to a bend knife. Again, this, this knife uh, is a really good shape for that inside piece. Shapes that I want to get put, put into the boat. So. the shape I would like to do just needs to clean up a little bit and that's uh, that's how you do one side of the boat or the one side of the canoe bowl and then we'll do the other side of the, the canoe bowl just the same way and, uh, just using a bent knife and a number nine chisel so we're just about to do our final sanding uh, and it's gonna be with the 220 grit Although there are places on the on the canoe bowl that uh, I've just touched up with my knife to get the shape that I want it to get. Um, everything else is done 220 and there's a few uh, patches here that need just need to be touched up. Um, and what I'll do, that I touched up with a knife, and what I'll do, I'll go over it with 100 grit um, sandpaper, uh, 150, 220, and get some of these uh, knife marks that I put in there. Um, and then the bowl is going to be done um, for this part. And then you can go on to design it if you wish. And you can also uh, go down and, and when you put a design on it, you can carve onto it. Or you can just paint it. So just leave it up to you. Or you can leave it plain. Um, many, uh, many of the bowls that they had uh, went undecorated. And uh, we'll see what we do with this one. So there we have it, that's the final sanding with the 220 uh, grit sandpaper. Uh, gives a really nice smooth finish over the whole piece. And 
you're able to get uh, all these bumps out of there. Just with a little bit of hard work and some perseverance with the sandpaper, probably take you a morning to do uh, the whole bowl. And as far as uh, working from your grits all the way to the final 220. And what I usually do is this, I'll leave the inside of the bowl itself um, just with a knife finish, uh, making sure my knife is sharp and that uh, um, I've worked with all the grains and stuff. And it turns out to be just gives a little bit of a, a bit of a rough um, finish inside with the knife cuts, but it's a nice contrast with the nice smooth uh, sanding surfaces that you've put together. And then that's it. That's your bowl. Uh, nice and complete.